it's integrated three, it's CL1-110. So I'm just going to do uh, letter C and letter D. So letter C says um, it wants us to find X if F of X equals 10. So that means I have to plug, if it says I have to find X if F of X equals 10, then I'm going to plug 10 in for F of X. So it's going to say 10 equals square root x plus 4. See, I just plugged in the 10. And then I want to solve it for x, because that's what it asked me to do. So I'm going to use algebra. I'm going to undo by squaring both sides. 10 squared is 100. When I square a square root, it goes away, it like undoes itself, and then so I have x plus four. And then I want x by itself, so I'm gonna subtract four on both sides. And I'll get that x equals 96. Okay, and then letter B, I wanna find x if g of x equals six. So there's g of x, so all I have to do is take that six and put it right there where g of x is. So in other words, I'm gonna say six, equals g of x, which is x squared minus x. And then I'm supposed to solve for x. So this looks like a quadratic to me, so I'm going to have to bring the 6 to the other side. So now I have a quadratic, and I know that I can solve quadratics by factoring. Um, and if they don't factor, I can use the quadratic formula. But I like to use the diamond problem. So I want something that multiplies. This is an invisible 1, and 1 times negative 6. I want it to multiply to make negative 6 and add to make whatever the coefficient of x is. This is a negative 1 in front of my x. And then so I ask myself, what are the two numbers that I could multiply together and make negative 6? and they would add to make negative one. I'm thinking three times two if the three was negative. And then I could put them back in the box, you know, like that. But I'm gonna just tell you that since the coefficient of x squared was just one, I don't need to put them back in that box. I can take a shortcut. I'll go ahead and put them in there anyway. I think you guys like the x squared on the bottom which is weird to me because I always put it on top. I'm just doing this in case this is familiar to you. So I know x, x times x is x squared. Um, this has to be a 2 because this times this has to equal what's inside. Um, this will be a negative 3. And then I just check it. So you can see here that I got the same answer. I just skipped this step. But um, now I'm using the zero product property. because so I have something times something else, and the answer is zero. So that means either this something equals zero, or maybe this something equals zero, or maybe they both equal zero. So we just go. Okay, so if I add three to both sides, and it does cancel out. There's my two answers.